All right, so what we're going to start off with is I need you to grab one of these spool holders. And this is just to give you a demonstration of kind of how that goes together. If you've already built one, that's wonderful. Um, but we'll start with that. And so I'm assuming the computer has the, the ability to install programs and we got that covered and everything? Do what now? You can install programs on that computer, correct? Yes. Yeah. Awesome, cool. Just double checking. And then, so for these, let me swap cameras real fast so I can demonstrate this real quick. They're pretty easy to go together. It's just a little tedious sometimes to get these tabs in while still getting the nut into the same spot. So if we look here, you see how I had that all the way out to the end there. Uh -huh. And then I like to basically hold this to the side and then kind of slide it up into it. And then I'll drop okay. the screw until the nut falls into place. And then I tighten it. Okay. So in order to tighten that, you should have an Allen wrench in your um, little toolkit, and it's going to be the second smallest. So there will be one smaller than this. It's the second smallest Allen wrench. Okay. And then the other side is going to go on the exact same way. Okay. I'll walk through that one more time. Basically just slide it up and let it fall into place. These can be a little bit hard for the first ones to kind of put together and you'll have a couple to be put together, but luckily your students can do the rest of them. Okay. And that's kind of the goal here is to get all your kids printing stuff and working through all, everything and through this whole process that we're kind of going to talk about today. Okay. And then there was also like a little nut and bolt kind of deal like uh -huh. this. That actually goes with it and it sits right in the top of there. Okay. And so that's the entire spool holder. So while you're still kind of putting that one together, um, I wanted to talk just a little bit about um, what, we, what the process is of 3D printing. So the first part that we're really going to be uh, the hardest and it's going to take the most time and it's going to be the most effort is going to be your design process. And that's going to involve a lot of measuring or otherwise, you know, remodeling or getting measurements for something that you may want to make. And it's going to take the most time to kind of teach students how to think from a two-dimensional to a three-dimensional idea. And okay. that's kind of what the design process is going to work through. And it's going to be a lot about, you know, we have a couple programs we like to recommend. And they're all CAD programs, so computer-aided designs. And we like to recommend Tinkercad for a younger generation, so anywhere from kind of inter intermediate to middle school age or junior high is going to be kind of Tinkercad. And then on shape is a great transition from junior high to high school. And then I like to recommend Inventor for high school as um, actually Project Lead the Way, if you've ever heard that. Has. Yes, we're a, we're a Project Lead the Way. Excellent. So you teach, do you teach Intro to Engineering Design? Yes. Oh, so this lines up perfectly for it. Okay. So you must know Inventor then already, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So do you use Fusion 360 or Inventor for your classes? Yeah, Inventor. Inventor. Okay. And that's great. So Fusion 360, if you haven't even used that either, is also a cloud-based system and it's great for kind of collaborating. Instead of having that single individualized inventor idea, it does have like a cloud-based system and it's kind of like more like a browser that you almost download with plugins and stuff. Um, I like it. It's really functional and it's pretty much the exact same as, in, as inventor. So like if you wanted students to collaborate on a project other than all huddling around the same computer and one person's doing everything and getting that experience, you could have them on Fusion 360 and kind of separate up tasks for them. So that's a that's another idea for you if you uh, haven't seen a little bit of that. And it should be just as, I'm sure it's either included or it may be partially separate to your seats that you have for Inventor now, and it's free for educators anyway. So that is okay. something always look for. Um, so do you know what the file types are that we use here on the printers? Uh, SPL. Right, so STL, so that stands for stereo, stereo, bleh, sorry, stereolithography, and what it is is basically it's a whole bunch of triangles made up by edges and vertices, and that's what we get out of a CAD program. So we transport it from being the CAD part or IPT, which is going to be for Inventor, and then we have to export it as a STL or an OBJ, and those are both the same type of files. OBJs just keep um, the face textures and colors for an object rather than just making it a full kind of mesh that is made up of triangles. Um, 
So for, for that case, we like to recommend STL because you can't really tell the printer what color to print in because you only have like that one filament kind of thing going in. So that's going to be the color that you're using. And you can swap the colors in and out, but you kind of have to think in layers of how you're going to print it in separate colors if you were looking for something like that. So, um, so we have the product, we design, make it, and then we're going to export it as an STL. Um, what inventor year are you using? Uh, we are on 16. 2015? 16. 2016. 16? Um, I'm not sure if they have adapted an STL uh, like export process, but the way I have to do it on Inventor 2015 is actually click on print and then print with a 3D uh, software kind of view. And so it actually redirects you to a web page or whatever, but you can save it directly as an STL file on your computer. You just have to go to print and print for 3D software. Um, okay. So that's it. Just in case you kind of get lost in that kind of range, um, that's how you would go about that process. And if you have problems with that, you're welcome to contact me. Okay. Um, so that whole design, once we export it into an STL file, we're going to use that in a slicer. And so this is the next big process that we're going to go through. So the first one's design, and the second one's going to be slicing, or something we like to call Kira. Kira is the actual program. So if you take the USB that you had, um, and we go ahead and just plug it into our computers. And it should say that it's an NWA 3D. And on there should be something called Kira. And it should be an install file, whether it's a Mac or a PC, there should be one for both. And so at this point, I'm gonna screen share with you so we can kind of go through the process of setting up our slicer and getting our settings ready for our specific printer. And when I, when I screen share with you, it may like make it big and huge and you might not be able to edit anything. There should be an option in more or at the top of the panel that allows you to um, minimize or go away from full screen. And okay. uh, I recommend doing that so that we can kind of work through it together and we can get everything set up as we want. Okay. So can you see my screen and everything? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to come into the Kira folder, and then we should be able to just run this application file or the exe and double click it and run through the installer until you get to this add new machine wizard. And that's just okay. the process of basically clicking next and agreeing to user license agreements and then um, installing some drivers. And so we'll get to this screen and that's where I want you to pause and just let me know when you get there. Okay. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and click next, and then we're gonna choose this selection of other. We're gonna click next one more time, and then we're going to select Mendel. That's the type of operating system that our printer has. And then we'll click next one more time, and then we'll click finish. So what it's going to open up is our workspace in order to load STL files and slice them or create them into G code. And G code is the next type file that the printers will actually use themselves. So the STLs make it a mesh of triangles and then we slice it into layers here and use it on the printer. So it's the same code that CNC machines use and it's actually it's a numerical value that basically tells coordinates for the printer. All right, so we have a couple settings that we're going to change basically here on this basic tab that we have on the left hand panel. We're going to change almost all of these settings and then we'll also change the specific machine settings for our A5s. Basically, I mean... Okay, uh, real quick, mine is uh, doing something funky. It never let me uh, get installed and now the uh, setup new machine thing, I'm not doing that. Um, I, I caught bits and pieces of that. It was a little bit hard to hear. Uh, did the USB disconnect or something? Is that what's going on? Um, no, it's it installed Cura, but now like where I thought that I was where you were and uh, it installed and I've got Cura open and where uh, the like the new machine wizard or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. I'm um, add new machine. Yeah, I can go back through that if you'd like me to, Will. Okay, so um, I just click other and yes. where am I? 
other, and then we're going to click on Mendel. So you're looking for that. That's about halfway down. Okay, found it. Uh -huh. And then we'll click Next and Finish. Okay. All right. And Sorry about that. You should be caught up. Oh, no, you're good. Okay. Okay, so this screen is our workspace. And so that blue area that kind of has as a box is basically telling us this is our build area or what we can print on. And so okay. this is a bit large for the A5 just because we haven't changed the settings. But we're going to talk about here on the left-hand side panel first. Okay. So here at layer height, and I know there's a lot of information in this section. And if you have any questions, any concerns, or anything, please just stop me and hey, just ask me a question. I'd love to answer it for you. Okay. So, all right, so layer height in millimeters. Notice whenever I hover over these, it kind of gives you a snippet of what it is and um, kind of tells you what's going on with that setting. But I'm going to step through them with you. So layer height, we use anywhere from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 millimeters. And this determines the quality of your print. It's basically telling you how close the layers are together. And so 0.1s are going to be closer, and then 0.2s would be farther apart. And then 0.3 is going to be your lowest quality, but also the fastest print speed. Okay. So we like to use that at 0 0.2 for this first print because it's kind of in between. It's not bad, but it's not super good. And then we're going to change our shell thickness. So our shell thickness, which is the outside um, area of our object. So our object's going to have an outside perimeter, and that outside perimeter is going to be defined by this shell thickness. So it's at least going to have this much of a shell on that outside perimeter. And we want this value to be 0 0.8. So it may turn yellow for you. The reason it did that is because it's mad about the nozzle size. So the nozzle size and the shell thickness need to be a multiple of each other. And since the case, the nozzle size here is 0 0.5, it's throwing us a little error value. So we want to change this to 0 0.4 as that's the size of our nozzles on our machines. Okay. And then we're going to change the bottom top thickness to the same as the shell thickness so that the area around the object is all the same width. All right, now we have fill density. And depending upon the object, this is kind of its durability factor. So if you have five, it's gonna be weaker on the inside. If you have you know, up to whatever you would like, 100%, which will take a lot of filament and a lot of time, you can have it. But we like to do anywhere from five to 20%, as 20% still provides a very rigid structure. For this demonstration and for the sake of kind of print speed, we're going to change it to 5% in fill. Now, will I set this up each time that I print? I'm sorry, what? Well, uh, each time that I get ready to print, will I need to set this up? You will not. This is okay. profile specific. So if you do log in yeah. as a different account, you will have to set this up again. But if okay. you use your same account on the same computer, it'll still be there. Okay. All right, so here we have print speed, and we like to say 50 millimeters per second is a great speed for our A5 printers. Now they can go all the way up to 60 millimeters per second, but then you're kind of stretching it and it gets to a point that it may be a little bit too quick and it might knock your build or it may reduce the quality that you have. So by decreasing the print speed, you can increase quality and some tolerance and um, we like to put it at 50 because it's kind of like a good mid-range. So if you did want to decrease it, you can decrease it to about 25. It just depends on what you're printing and how intricate it can be. So in this case, we generally print at 50. Next, we're going to have our printing temperature, and we use PLA. And so the little box that pops up says PLA is a 210 degrees Celsius usually. But what we're going to do is we're going to change it to 220 degrees. That's because the plastic that we send you from our shop actually has a special composite in it that makes it extremely flexible. So if you took a normal thing of PLA and you kind of twisted it like this, it would not end up twisting around. It would end up snapping a lot like that. So I twisted it all the way around my finger and it still didn't snap. It's extremely flexible and because of that composite, we have to heat it to a higher temperature for it to melt correctly. So we use 220 degrees Celsius. Okay. So if you are using a different type of PLA, I would recommend kind of researching if there's an extra, you know, process to it that it may be using and make sure you determine the right temperature to print it. But you should probably have a lot of filament from us and 220 will be great. Okay. 
So next up, we're going to have bed temperature. And the A5 printers do not have a heated bed. So we're going okay. to change that value to zero degrees. Okay. Next, we have support. The support type, we like to tell you to use everywhere because it ensures that the, whatever model you print will be supported in an area that's not touching the build plate. So what I kind of mean is if you have an arm floating here for a robot and there's clear space here in between, what it does is it generates a small structure support that reaches all the way up to the arm in order for it to support it in midair. And so we like to say everywhere just to make sure that it does print like so. Then we're gonna have the platform adhesion type. And this basically will help you to adhere a certain uh, build plate to the, I'm sorry, a certain object to the build plate. And so what I mean by that is you, if you have something that's not, doesn't touch the build plate in very many areas or is like a small surface area of it, you may wanna use brim in order to adhere it a little bit better. Also, if you're having issues with an object warping up from the build plate, you can use a brim in that case also. Um, for the case of this, we're just going to leave none because the object that we print next will not need a platform adhesion type. It should work well. All right, so filament. We're going to change the size of the diameter for the filament to 1.75 millimeters. And that is also on the side of your plastic right here. Okay. Okay. It also tells you the type of plastic and size and then, of course, the color that you got it in. Then we're going to have flow percentage, and we're going to leave the flow percentage at 100%. That's basically going to either over extrude or under extrude how much plastic you're using. On general, in general, we want it to be at 100% flow because, of course, it should work correctly at 100%. If you feel like a certain area needs more or less plastic, you can adjust that setting as you see fit. Usually anywhere from like a little bit 5% up or down isn't that much of a big value change. And it might be something you could use to see if there's a change to your prints. And then finally, we have the nozzle size and we've already changed that. And that's a multiple of our shell thickness. All right. So now come up to the top bar here to bar and click on machine. And then we're going to go down to machine settings. And this is basically where we're going to tell the computer, this is the build plate size that we have and what we can print at. So we're going to change X, Y, and Z. So for the first maximum width here, we're going to change this value to 125, or right around five inches. We're going to do the same thing for the Y here, and that's going to be 150, or about six inches. And then finally, we're going to use 100 here, or right at about four inches. And so again, we don't have a heated bed, so let's uncheck this box. And now the only thing left to do is name the printer. So I'm gonna click right here and click change machine name. If you don't see the box pop up, it may have popped up behind Kira. And then I'm just gonna change it to NWA3DA5 and hit okay. And so when you hit OK, you should see the blue box behind it kind of change in size as it adjusts. And we're going to click OK one more time on that machine setting. And now all of those values are saved, and we should be good to go for our A5 printers. Cool, well, you feel comfortable with those that we went over? Yes. All right, sounds good. Okay, so now the next process that we're gonna use, since we kind of have everything set up and we know it's good, is to load in our model. And so let's go ahead and click here in the top left-hand corner, it says load. You can also do a file load, just like any other um, program that we're using to load objects. And if you navigate to NWA3D, the SD card, and double click on the STL files, you should see the keychain or the six-sided dies. Which one would you like to print today? The keychain? Yeah. Okay, double click on the keychain and we should see it pop up inside of our box. And so being familiar with Inventor and the like, you can probably the uh, movement controls are gonna be very similar. You're gonna be able to zoom in and out. And then we're also gonna have some extra functions here. We're gonna be able to rotate the object. We're going to be able to scale 
the object, and then we can also mirror the object as necessary, okay? In order to move it, you just click on the object and drag. And then to rotate it, you're gonna click on the object, and then these three boxes down here in the bottom left will pop up, and we'll be able to rotate or lay flat through these axes. And so we can kind of manipulate it how we would like it to print. And print orientation is a big deal because that uh, the supports that I described earlier is something that you may want to take into account with a printing an object. And the less supports, usually the better finish that you'll come out of. And it will also make it easier for the printer to be finished with that object. So you'll have less post-processing and you won't have to do as much, you know, modifying to the object at the end. And then we also have scaling, which you can either grab the boxes on the screen and move it, or we can also change the values here. This is going to be basically a percentage value, so this is 100% is the idea. You can use uniform or non-uniform scaling. It is completely up to you. And then there's also a function to max size for the build plane. Next, we have mirror, and depending upon which axis you choose, you can mirror the object in that way. All right, and then finally for this kind of area, I'm going to talk about the layers. So we have a view mode here, and this allows us to see the object in different ways. And so normal is basically what we're looking at. Right now it's going to be a yellow object if it's good and we can print it. It'll be a gray object if it's not ready to print, so like that. And then we're going to have overhangs, which will tell us what areas will need supports for overhangs. And then we have a transparent and x-ray version. And then finally, we have layers, which I find to be extremely helpful. When you click on layers, it'll generate the sliced code that it's going to tell the printer to move across. And this is, as you scroll down, you'll be able to see how the printer is going to toolpath and move through the object in order to layer out each piece of plastic. And so I find this is a really useful tool, and it can definitely help in seeing supports and that type of idea, if you click on layers, it will show you the supports that are being used by the object in this light blue color. And then the rest of it is kind of shell thickness, like the red is shell thickness and outside edges, and then the yellow is infill areas. Awesome, so you have any questions about that right now? No, sir. All right, and then we're also going to be able to right click on objects and move them around. So let me move back to normal view mode right click the object and click center on platform to make sure it's in the very center. And then we can save to SD, toolpath to SD, or we can click file and save as G code as that's the type we wanna export as. And then I'm going to click on just the main folder for our SD card and I will click save. So we pulled in the STL file, we sliced it and edited it into G code and now we're going to transfer it from the printer, which is a third step, and then the fourth step would finally be to print. So once we have it loaded to SD card, did you get it saved as well? Yes. Okay, then we can go ahead and eject our SD card so we can close Cura. Go ahead and I'm just gonna right click on this guy and click eject. Alrighty. Now we can take the little SD card that we have and we can move it over to the printer. And so the A5 printers is what we're going to experience with next. So we kind of went over that we were going to create a design, use it as an STL, then we were going to slice it in Cura, and now there's two steps of transferring and printing. So we okay. have I, real quick. Yeah, go ahead. So I'll need to save it onto uh, the SD card that you guys sent, is that right? Yes, yeah, save it on the SD card so we can actually move the SD card itself to the printer. Gotcha. All right, so the only steps that we have left to print from what we've done so far is to transfer it or move it into the printer and then click print. But since we kind of, you know, moved it through shipping and it went through all those different processes, what we need to do next is going to be troubleshooting our printer and making sure it's actually ready to print before we kind of just make it do its thing. So we've already gone over the process, which is design, slice, transfer, and print. 
And now we have to go over troubleshooting issues before we actually print to make sure it'll work right. So the SD card here is going to go into the small slot that's directly below the button on the A5 printer. Okay. So right here. Do you have an A5 uh, ready on hand that we can yes, use? I'm, I'm, I'm awesome, I'm, cool. I'm plugged in. I didn't know how much you were going to walk me through. So I was starting from nothing. Yeah. So the next entire process that we're going to go over is basically troubleshooting and making sure the printer is ready to go before we do our first print. And you won't have to do all of these steps um, for printing, um, but if you do come across an issue or the printer is not working right or it's not printing out the object like you want it to, of course, you kind of go through these steps. So okay. the first troubleshooting issue is going to be Kira. You always, always want to take a look at your slicer settings and make sure that they are set correctly and as you want them to be. The second one is going to be mechanical errors. We're making sure basically all the motors are plugged in, the limit switches are plugged in, and that nothing is going awry on our printer physically. And so we can go through that process right now. So we have our X limit switches here and here. So we wanna make sure those are plugged in. And then we have an extruder one here. So that's gonna push our filament through. And then we have a Z limit switch right in here. It's kind of hard to see, and it's under the base of everything, but it's right in the bottom. Okay. And then we'll have the Z motor in the back, and then we'll have the two Ys right here. We'll have the motor and the limit switch. Okay. As long as those are all plugged in, we should be good. And then we also want to make sure that there's no gap here in our motor for our Z axis. So right here at the bottom base plate, we want it to touch pretty much the acrylic. Okay. And it looks good, yeah. Sweet. So that's just kind of mechanical check, and we also want to make sure one more thing of the belts. We want to make sure the belts are tight enough that whenever we kind of move them a little bit, that it's moving the build plate, and that everything seems pretty happy. So they shouldn't be super tight, but it sh you should feel a little resistance, a little give whenever you push on them. Okay. Yeah. All right, so that was our second step for troubleshooting. First cure, then mechanical. Now the third step, which tends to take the longest in these videos, is going to be leveling the build plate. And so what we do is we level the build plate to the printer itself. And so this process, we're going to need a piece of paper. So I got a piece of paper here. And we're gonna take that piece of paper. Any normal printer paper will work great. Anything that's like 100 micron paper is the idea. We're gonna fold that piece of paper, we're gonna fold it in half. Now the reason we're folding it in half is because of these blue lock builds that are on our printers. These blue lock builds are extremely absorbent to the plastic that lays on top of them. So it has a microscopic property that the plastic lays into it easier and it adheres better. So we have to use an extra 100 micron layer in order to make sure that it's not too close and it doesn't get way too stuck to the object or to the build plate. So I'm going to take the piece of paper and I'm actually going to move it under the extruder. And so I want it right under the nozzle. And so- and should, I, should I be following along doing this as well? Yes, yes, yes. This is okay. a hands-on portion. So you are more than welcome to follow along. Okay. And I would very much like that. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug mine in. And I think you said yours is plugged in, that's good, that's fine. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna plug it in, and then I want you to hit the button once, and it should come up to a screen with multiple options. I want you to scroll to setup, just by twisting the knob. Okay, I'm gonna hit that. Yeah, you're good. Okay. All right. We're gonna, set up. we're gonna click it once and we're gonna see options, and then we want to go to setup, right? And click okay. it again. And then we want to go to auto home. Okay. So that's gonna take us to the origin point for our printer. So it's gonna go zero X, zero Y, and zero Z. And once we have that, go ahead and click on Disable Motors, which is the option right below Auto Home. 
And this is gonna allow us to move our build plate now. So the real thing we wanted to do was make sure Z is at zero and make sure that we're leveling the nozzle to the build plate. Okay, on mine, whenever I hit disable motors, it's not letting me move the build plate. I'm sorry, could you repeat that for me? Yeah, I hit the uh, disable motors and it's not letting me move the build plate. It feels pretty snug. Okay, if it still feels really tight and it won't move, like I, I can kind of move it with one finger. It's a little bit tight, but not bad. If you still feel like it's really uh, trying to resist you, then click on it again and go back to disable motors and click. Okay, away. it's it's going now. I think that it, it was uh, not quite the uh, the arm wasn't all the way down, but oh, now yeah. it's it's all there. If it's still moving through the process of auto home, it won't let you do anything else. Okay, okay, it's it's done that, and now I can move it. Okay, cool. So what we're gonna do is we auto homed it, so Z is at zero, and now we want to take our piece of paper and. We want to slide it under our nozzle here. And so our nozzle is the tiny little piece that's almost touching the build plate. So I can show you that here. And that's just that. You can see in there that little piece that's sticking out, touching the build plate. And so that's the piece that we're trying to level to the build plate. And that's where, we're, where we want it to be a really close tolerance of 200 microns so it layers onto it well. Okay. And so through this process, you may see me pick up my 3D printer and kind of move it around and stuff. And um, for the sake of leveling, you shouldn't do that because you want it on a level surface. Um, this is for demonstration so that you can kind of see what's going on. We can kind of walk through this together. Okay. So on this next part, we're going to look at the knobs or the leveling knobs that we have. So there should be one directly inside here. Okay. And then there's two on the outside. So they're the things that have springs on them. Okay. And this is going to be the process of making a triangle level in order to make the build plate surface completely flat. Okay. okay. And so what we're going to do is we have that piece of paper underneath our nozzles. And so we should be able to sit, feel a certain amount of resistance when we move this piece of paper across the nozzle. And so I don't feel any resistance okay. at all. Okay. So that's a problem. So that means my build plate is too low for my nozzle to uh, print out the plastic on it. So if that's okay. the case, then what I need to do is I need to move it up. So what I like to say is clock up and count down. That's how we're going to turn the screws in order to make it move. So clock up and count down. So if I go clockwise, it's going to go up. If I go counterclockwise, it's going to move it down. Okay. So if I want to move it back up because it feels too loose, then I'm going counterclockwise. That's not going to work that way. Too far. Okay. So what I'm looking for is a certain amount of resistance. So I kind of feel it now, but if you want an idea of how that resistance is, if you take the piece of paper and you put your finger on top of it and you kind of pull across it without stopping it, and without buckling the paper, that's about the amount of resistance that you want to feel whenever you're using it underneath the nozzle. Okay, is mine under the nozzle? It's, uh, I'm guessing it's, my nozzle is too low. Okay, so if your nozzle's too low and you can't get the paper underneath it, these are on springs. So what we can do is we can actually push down on the build plate like this in order to slide the paper underneath the nozzle. Okay. Do you see how that's kind of moving when I push down on it? Yes. Yeah, so we can go ahead and do that and then slide the paper back underneath it. Okay. So that we can start leveling. So I'm actually going to push mine down and slide it underneath. So the area I'm at is much too tight because whenever I'm trying to move this, it's buckling the paper like that, right? Right. So I'm going to go counterclockwise in order to go down. And then I have a much better resistance or feeling that the nozzle is just kind of dragging across the paper, but not stopping it in any way. And this is definitely something to get used to, and it takes a while for, you know, yourself and the kids to become comfortable with leveling it. It's just kind of like a work through process. So once okay. you have this inside nut, so what we want to do is have the nozzle directly above that inside nut and then we want to feel the resistance. So once you feel like you're comfortable with that one, we can move to the outside. Okay. 
So did you get that one a little bit level? Uh, I think so. So when you're saying the, uh, the nozzle above the nut, Yep. What so do you, you what do you mean? Above the nut, right? Yeah, what do you mean by that? So let me show you. So if you look here, we have the small little nut here, right? Uh-huh. And that's the one that I'm adjusting with the spring. Right. And then we want the nozzle to be above that nut in order to get a good leveling for it. So okay. the nozzle is directly inside here or right under the fan. And then we want that on top of the knob that we're twisting so that we make sure we get the right distance for it. Okay, I got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you feel good with the resistance there? Yes. Okay, and then we're gonna move to the outside. So this one's a little easier to demonstrate that on. So if I move it over and I put the nozzle above it like that. Okay. Does that help you a little bit more on that, on yes. that side? Yeah. All right. And then we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with that inside knob. And so mine's way too far away, so I'm going to go clockwise to go up. And so once you start feeling a little bit of resistance, it should be good. And all right, I like where mine's at. So. And then we have just one more to do after that, and that's gonna be right behind that one that we just adjusted. Okay. Okay. And then just the back one, if you've already gotten that one, that's awesome too. Is that the one we started with first? So the third one is going to be right behind the one we kind of just adjusted. So if you look okay. here, we're going to have two on the outside and then we have one on the inside. Okay. So we're actually adjusting a triangle and we have to kind of make it level all around. Okay. So I did that one that's in the back first. Do I need to go back to it after I do those outside two? You mean the one that's on the inside? Yes. So the, the one on the inside, we have one here, right? I'll kind uh -huh. of point at them through the, throughout the build plate. We're going to have one right about here. Yes. And then we're going to have one here. Uh-huh. I have another one right back here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm going to find that one. So one inside and two on the outside. Okay. Yeah, I got that. Awesome. And so that's kind of how we go through the leveling process. And so I still need to adjust mine. I swear someone comes in here and messes with it every time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that feels good. Okay, so now we've leveled the build plate. That's the third trouble or the uh, third troubleshooting step. So the first one was kind of going over Kira and making sure the settings are right. Mechanical issues. This is second, and then leveling the build plate and so we still need to level the build plate one more time. So what we do actually when we before we ship these to you is we do a test print. And so there is possible that there's a piece of plastic that is still stuck onto the nozzle and that we leveled it with that plastic on there. So what we're going to do is I want you to click on the button. We're going to go to setup again. And this time we're going to click on preheat PLA. And then we're going to go ahead and 
well, after we hit preheat, go ahead and click on setup. And in this menu, notice the thing directly below preheat PLA is a preheat soft pool. And preheat soft pool is actually the area where if you have extruder problems or you have filament issues and it seems stuck and nothing's coming out of the nozzle, that's something you can use in order to help pull out the plastic. So what okay. preheat soft pool does is notice that for the PLA, we're heating to 220 like we had set it. And for, PL, for the soft pool, it heats it to 100 degrees Celsius instead of 220. And that's going from a cool state to 100 degrees because then it gets to a transition phase that it helps to coalesce everything within the nozzle and then it can pull, be pulled out. And so that's- so do I need to, do I need to uh, select the preheat soft pull as well? No, you do not, no. Okay. I'm just kind of talking about that option so you have an extra tool in your kit. Okay? Gotcha. And so that's a good way to remove nozzle clogs or filament issues. The other one is to push more filament through this tube to try and push out the clog. And so that's another possibility. Okay. And finally, you can kind of use preheat PLA to push through and pull back out plastic to see if you can remove the filament in that way. And then there's an, one other thing that we actually provide you with, and it's a very tiny kind of needle for these 0.4 millimeter nozzles. And that's going to be the nozzle unclogger, and it's shaped like this, and you're gonna use tweezers with that in order to floss it after it's been heated, okay? Okay. So heat to 220, and then you would floss it if you feel like the clog is really bad and you can't get it out any other way, okay? Okay. All right, so let's auto home one more time. Set up auto home. And that's going to pull us to zero, zero, zero. And then we're going to go through the level process one more time. And then we're going to feed the filament in. And then we'll start our frame. Okay? Okay. So let's make sure that nothing was caught in between the nozzle and the build plate by leveling one more time. Oh, I forgot a step. I needed to disable motors. So that is definitely an easy step to forget. Paper is worn out. We're doing this. All right. Wow, is that close? Once you feel comfortable with it being level, then we are good to go and load the film in. Okay. Well, mine seems extremely far off. It was way too close in every area. I somehow leveled it terribly. So I'm glad I did it one more time. All right. I'm happy with mine, and you can just let me know when you are done with yours. And then we will go through the main Okay. Okay. So what we're gonna do is now we wanna move the Z axis up because this guy's hot and we're gonna thread some filament through and we wanna make sure that it's coming out of the nozzle. So if you click once on the button, and this time we're gonna go to controls. Do I need to take it back to uh, zero again? Uh, no, it's okay. Okay. Yeah, we, we're just gonna move it up and push filament through. So before it prints, okay. it will always go back to zero, zero, zero. Okay. All right, so, so go ahead and go to controls. Okay. And then we're gonna go to move axis, which is down towards the bottom of that next screen. Okay. And then we're going to click move one millimeter and then move Z. And then we're going to move that up to about 20, 25, anywhere in there is a good, good setting. And so this is just to move the extruder up off of the build plate. And that way we can kind of see the plastic squeezing through. Okay. Okay. And so this is a very, this is a mechanical way or basically from the print screen of the computer to move our Z axis up and down. Okay. All right, so now that it's heated and 
we need the filament holder. Okay. So we're gonna take the filament holder and we're gonna take our filament that we had. And so I had it strung through there to make sure it didn't unravel on me, which is always nice. And I'm gonna take our little piece here and I'm gonna put it through the side. Okay. And then I'm gonna set that inside of our filament hole. So it just kind of makes it to where it can rotate on it. Like so. And I like to have the plastic wrapping over the top so it feeds easier into the printer. Okay. And for this part, we'll need some shears to cut the plastic. So they should be in your little toolkit, some shears. Okay. So for this part, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of undo the filament so that we can have it loose and we can actually thread it through. And I'm going to hold it on kind of both sides here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to clip it at an angle so it kind of makes a point with the, with the filament here. Okay. So I'm going to clip it just like that and it kind of has a nice point now so that it's easier to thread through for us. Okay. Okay. And so the next part is to kind of find the hole that they that the filament's gonna feed into. And so it's gonna be in that yellow bracket here in the back with the spring, okay? Mm -hmm. And that yellow bracket, what we do is we just go ahead and squeeze on the trigger and then push the filament through the small hole that's sitting right next to the Z-axis. Okay, did you find that with me? I did. Awesome, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna squeeze and we're gonna push that through. And we're gonna thread that all the way through the boat into. And so we should be able to go all the way through this tube here and to the extruder. And once we get there, we should feel some resistance. And you'll notice that you can keep pushing, but it's going to be a lot slower. And so what that's doing is if we take a look at our nozzle now, we should be able to see that plastic came out, right? Yes. Okay. So depending upon what color we use to test print yours with, you may see two different colors. Right. So the first one was what we actually tested with, and the second one is the color you just thread through it. So that's another way to change your filament colors for a student. So if a student's kind of going, well, I, the first of my print ended up green and the rest of it was supposed to be blue, they didn't purge the nozzle and that they needed to kind of push the filament through either to remove the clog or remove the other color. You got you. All right. And so for safety purposes, I'm going to take my pliers here and I'm going to go ahead and grab that plastic that came out and kind of just remove it out of the place, okay? And so, now that our filament's threaded, then we, all we really need to do now is print. So the process that we went through there for the troubleshooting was we went Hero settings, we did mechanical issues, we did the printer build plate level, and then we did filament. We kind of covered the filament issues about the soft pull, the pushing extra filament through as necessary, and then the remover, uh, the clog removing tool that we had. So, all right, so next we're going to click on the button. And we're going to scroll to print from SD. And then we're going to select our keychain that we decided to save to. Okay. And did you get all that? You got it. Awesome. So now it should say heating on our status screen, and then it'll move to zero, 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 and then it'll start printing. Okay. So on the top right-hand corner, you should see 220 degrees and 220 degrees. So the top number tells you what temperature it wants to go to, and the bottom number tells you what it is currently at. All right? Okay. And so that's how you kind of see the status screen, and then you can see the X, Y, and Z, depending upon how the motor moves, and that's telling you where it's going to next. So now my status screen says printing, and it keeps changing X, Y, and Z values as it moves across the build plate. All 
All right. So did yours start printing? Um, I'm sorry? I, I think it is, yes. Okay, yep. Um, just let me know. We'll kind of watch it for the first couple process here to make sure. And it should be good. So do you have any questions while we're kind of waiting for the first layer printer? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not really about our next thing, but while the point is that you have a test, be fine for the I'm sorry? The uh, filament that I have here, it, will it work in both the A5s and the Rays 3D? Yes, it will. Yes, okay. both, both the type of filament, uh, all of the filament that you have, either it, if it's push plastic or if it's toner plastic, they will both work within the Rays 3D. Yes. Okay, awesome. And so you'll kind of set the same type of settings within the Rays 3D and the program that we use for that one. So the slicer okay. for the Rays 3D is going to be a little bit different than the slicer we use for our NWA 3D A5s. Okay. You can use the same software. There's just a like, little extra add that helps um, with the slicer for the N2. Okay. okay. Now, uh, so 